Great is it that we get to tell everybody how Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance? So you only pay for happening now. In January, a man shot and killed by San Antonio police outside South Park Mall. Now Police Chief William McManus says he will not release the body cam footage. His reason why and what the mayor has to say next. An opening statement started today in the highly anticipated trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. The arguments each side is laying out coming up. The weather has been gorgeous over the last few days with low humidity. Now, unfortunately, we are going to see humidity rise, but our rain chances rise slightly as well. I'll be back with a look at your forecast and a preview of Easter weekend. Sneezing, wheezing, itchy eyes coming up. How do you know if it's oak pollen or COVID-19 and what to do about it? The news at five starts right now. And first and five, we have breaking news happening in the medical center area. San Antonio police at the scene of a fatal shooting in the 8000 block of Oakdale Way. That's near Hamilton Wolf and Babcock Road. Garrett Berger is live at the scene where SAPD just gave us an update. Garrett, what can you tell us? Well, we know that one man is dead in an apartment at this apartment complex, the Oaks of Northgate, and another man being interviewed by police right now. We don't have much information beyond that at this moment, but we did just receive an update just a few minutes ago from a police spokeswoman with the information that they do have. Now, police described the two people involved as roommates here at the apartment complex, and there was an incident involving video games and a gun, though the police spokeswoman did not have many details beyond that. It wasn't clear how the victim ended up being shot, and the spokeswoman couldn't even confirm who pulled the trigger. The victim was hit in the torso, though, and died on scene. Police are calling the other man a person of interest right now and say he's being very cooperative. As of right now, there are no charges, though they said they would be updating us if that changes. Live near the medical center, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. Police body cam video of the fatal shooting of a man outside of South Park Mall in January will not be released to the public, according to Police Chief William McManus. He said his decision based on the wishes of the man's mother, a decision that our Paul Venable reports is receiving mixed reaction. Just over two months ago, 26-year-old Eric Mejia was shot and killed by SAPD officers after police say he raised a gun at the officers. The shooting was recorded on an officer's body cam. Police Chief William McManus has issued a statement saying that he will not release that video at the request of Mejia's mother. His statement reads, based on the circumstances surrounding the incident, I do not believe there is compelling law enforcement or public interest that would cause me to go against the decedent's mother. The mayor's reaction to the chief's decision? If there is a, a family that can uh, that is going to be re-traumatized and there's not a public safety interest in the release of the footage, uh, then that is uh, seems to be a reasonable um, uh, use of the discretion that the chief has under state statute. But a criminal justice expert questions the decision. It's concerning in the fact that now more than ever, transparency is really important. Kevin, how do you balance the public's need to know, if you will, uh, against the, the wishes of the, of the family? Then one could go to the family and say, we want to respect you, but we also want to be transparent for the community. Would you be okay if we were able to blur this or we were able to show it in a different way? In a letter to the city manager, McManus said the victim's mother said that to release the body cam video would cause her great distress. Paul Venom, my case at 12 News. The two people have been arrested in connection with the murder of a 39 year old man, 55 year old Douglas Skaggs and 22 year old Haley Gibbons arrested in Austin on Friday. The victim, Tito Roman, who was shot at the Home Suites Motel on Northwest Loop 410 back on March 17th. Investigators say Roman and Gibbons went to the hotel and while they were there, Roman was shot by Skaggs. Gibbons and Skaggs then took off in a red truck with another person. The two are awaiting extradition to Bear County. More arrests are expected. We're now working to learn the name of a driver killed in a crash overnight. According to San Antonio police, the victim was speeding off of Loop 1604 between Hebner and Bitters just before three in the morning. But that driver hit a concrete barrier and was not wearing a seatbelt. As a result, the driver was thrown from the vehicle 
and died at the scene. I want to give you a quick update on a story we told you about on Friday. A correction about a fatal crash near I-35 in San Luis. That's downtown. We've learned that the man who died there is 25-year-old Daniel De La Rosa. San Antonio police say his truck flew off an I-35 ramp and De La Rosa was thrown from the truck. He died at the scene. We previously reported the victim is Tony Yates, who died in a separate crash on Friday. San Antonio police investigating a shooting that happened outside of the Tommy's restaurant on Wordsbach Road last night. They say that two men were shot, one in the leg, the other in the chest, after leaving a birthday party at a nearby bar. The shooter reportedly fired more than two dozen rounds at them. Some of the bullets hit the restaurant's interior wall. None of them made it inside. Workers arriving for their next shift this morning were surprised to find out what went down. I saw a detective that he was, I guess, looking for something, and I asked him what was going on, so that's when he told me um, that they have been shot. At last check, police are still looking for that suspect. In the meantime, we're awaiting the arrival of unaccompanied minors who will be temporarily housed at the Freeman Coliseum. We're told they could arrive as early as today, probably tonight. County Judge Nelson Wolf made the announcement last week, saying for now the agreement is for 60 days. It's unclear how many kids will be at Freeman Coliseum, but we do know it's equipped to house as many as 2,400. Those children will be provided food, water, clothing, shelter, and will be tested for COVID prior to arriving and every five days after they're here. The goal is to reunite them with family members in the U.S. within five to seven days. All others will be transferred to licensed care facilities. Now to the situation at the southern border. An ABC News Ipsos poll suggests that 57% of Americans disapprove of President Biden's handling of the rise of migrants entering the country. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez has the latest from Los Angeles. The crisis at the U.S.-Mexico border intensifying. More than 18,000 unaccompanied minors now in government custody. With Axios reporting the surge is expected to continue for at least another six months, saying documents from the Biden administration reveal that by September, as many as 26,000 unaccompanied minors could be apprehended crossing the border each month. The White House not commenting on that reported estimate, but saying they're working on solutions for problems they blame on the previous administration. We are uh, digging out of a broken system uh, over the past four years, not just the inhumane policies, but the fact that there were never efforts put in place to uh, look for us uh, and seek shelters where these children could be safely and humanely housed. Housing a major issue with some shelters for unaccompanied minors severely overcrowded. Republican senators touring this border patrol facility in Donna, Texas, sharing photos and videos showing children sleeping shoulder to shoulder on the floor under foil blankets. It's heartbreaking and what you see and it's shocking. Some Republicans also blaming President Biden's policies for encouraging migrants to cross the border. Order, something the White House denies as they work to stem the surge. And the president has also proposed an immigration bill that includes uh, $400 billion in funding to help address the root causes as well and help ensure uh, that uh, families and individuals who are making this trip are incentivized to stay in their countries. The White House press secretary also said their focus is on making sure there are enough shelters for unaccompanied minors who cross the border, saying three more opened last week with enough space for 7,000 people. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. It is the first day of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin's murder trial in the death of George Floyd. Chauvin knelt on the 46-year-old's neck on May 25th as Floyd told Chauvin and three other officers he couldn't breathe. Just a warning, some of the video you're about to see is graphic. Camila Bernal has the latest from Minneapolis. Inside a Minneapolis courtroom. This case is not about split second decision making. The murder trial for Derek Chauvin started with the state laying out their case against the former Minneapolis police officer. Well, you got it. Showing the jury nine minutes and 29 seconds of bystander video of George Floyd being held on the ground by Chauvin's knee. You will see that it does not let up and that it does not get up. Even when Mr. Floyd does not even have a pulse, it continues on. Prosecutor Jerry Blackwell telling jurors it's clear Floyd's death was a homicide and matches the patterns of someone who dies from oxygen deficiency. You'll see him when he goes unconscious and you'll be able to see 
the uncontrollable shaking he's doing when he's not breathing anymore. Defense lawyer Eric Nelson paints a different picture of what happened that day in May, telling jurors officers struggled to arrest Floyd and that the use of force is a necessary part of policing. Derek Chauvin did exactly what he had been trained to do over the course of his 19-year career. During the arrest, Nelson says Floyd put drugs in his mouth in an effort to conceal them from police. Mr. Floyd died of a cardiac arrhythmia that occurred as a result of hypertension, his coronary disease, the ingestion of methamphetamine and fentanyl, and the adrenaline throwing flowing through his body. In Minneapolis, I'm Camila Bernal reporting. Sherwood is being tried on charges of second degree unintentional murder, third degree murder and second degree manslaughter in George Floyd's death. He has pleaded not guilty. The trials anticipated to last up to four weeks. Well, low humidity has been our friend around San Antonio the last couple of days. It's been feeling amazing outside and this is a look at some of the temperatures. Our weather watcher temperatures in Warren's backyard in Del Rio, a little bit of a hot spot, 82 degrees, but out towards shirts at 78 West Kerrville, uh, 76 degrees, a little bit closer to San Antonio. We've got a temperature of 76 in U Universal City, Universal City and that shirts area. They actually got a very brief passing shower today, but those are the lucky few because we've been pretty dry over the last uh, couple of days other than yesterday morning's rain. So we'll take any little bit of rain we can get. No rain in the forecast tonight as temperatures fall to near 63 degrees right around midnight. Not too cool, but you will notice that clouds will be increasing and so will low level humidity and that humidity is going to play a big picture in our weather tomorrow. We've also got a cold front on the way, so I'll detail the forecast coming up in a few. Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. And we have a reminder today, the first day that the state of Texas is allowing anyone over the age of 16 to get a COVID-19 vaccine. That means you don't need to have an underlying medical condition or be in a specific group to make an appointment. You can find out more about how to register for a vaccine through the city and read more about how the city is still prioritizing the elderly. All you have to do is go to our website, ksat.com. As if navigating the coronavirus pandemic wasn't hard enough, expecting parents are facing some extra challenges. For pregnant women, the pandemic provides a whole new set of concerns. Does being pregnant put me at greater risk of getting COVID-19? Will the vaccine harm my unborn child? Will my baby be safe if I have COVID while giving birth? All month long, we've been receiving your questions, and this Wednesday, our Courtney Friedman will be bringing them to a panel of experts to get your answers. Our town hall event covering not only pregnancy, but infertility concerns as well. There's no evidence that there's any increased risk for infertility in women who've uh, received the vaccine uh, at this point. So we're not anticipating any significant issues there. Dr. Patrick Ramsey with the University Health, just one of the four panelists we'll have on hand to bring you more answers like that one. Join us for our pregnancy and infertility in a pandemic town hall this Wednesday at 2 p.m. You can stream the event online at ksat.com or on your ksat TV app wherever you stream. It is that time of the year. Spring allergens in the air. Pair them up with the pandemic and all that sneezing and wheezing might have you worried. Up next, we're going to take a look at the difference between COVID and allergies and what you should do. I want to take you to Freeman Coliseum right now, the Expo Hall to be exact. A bus is arriving on the scene. We have no confirmation that this is the first busload of unaccompanied minors, the migrants that have been brought up from the border, but the timing certainly would fit in with that. Again, we have no confirmation that this is a busload of unaccompanied minors being brought to Freeman Expo Hall, but that is what we believe is happening. As you see this picture from Sky 12. All the trucks and, and people that you see milling about the Expo Center right now, all staging uh, to take as many as 2,400 children, we're being told. Again, no confirmation that uh, this bus that just pulled up to the Expo Center uh, does contain children. We just know that uh, our efforts to confirm that um, we were actually uh, asked to give the Department of Health and Human Services a call instead, and perhaps they could confirm it. But as soon as we get more information, we'll bring it to you. But it looks like things are underway now at the Expo Center. They are signs of spring. They are sneezing, sniffling, itchy, red eyes. But nowadays, how do you know if the cause of that is allergies or maybe COVID-19 or even something else? 12 in your size, Marilyn Wartz, with the differences in what you should do. 
It's back. That yellowish blanket of oak pollen on your car and in the air. If you're allergic, it's something to sneeze at. But with COVID-19 still around, any sign of illness is concerning. There is overlap in COVID-19 and allergy symptoms. But experts say fever or loss of taste or smell are signs to get tested for COVID-19. But for sneezing and watery, itchy eyes, nose and throat, allergies are the likely culprit. So what can you do? Well, over-the-counter antihistamine nasal steroid sprays, and eye drops can help relieve your symptoms. But there are some other things you can do too. At home, keep windows shut and run the AC and keep your filters clean. And your pet, not only do they shed dander, they can carry pollen on their fur. So best to keep them out of the bedroom. To destroy things like pet dander, dust mites, and pollen, wash your bedding in hot water that's at least 120 degrees. You may bring the irritants inside too. Shower and wash your hair at night so you don't go to sleep with allergens. Vacuum at least once a week and avoid vacuums that can introduce dust back into the air. Allergy sufferers should should avoid a vacuum that collects debris in a bin since particles can float back into the air when you empty it. A better choice would be a bagged model with a HEPA filter. A portable air purifier that can handle a large room can also clean dust, smoke, and pollen from the air. Oak pollen season typically runs through early May, so grab the tissues. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Grab the tissues and wash your car quite often because <laughs> yeah, <I> that <laughs> yellow green stuff I right. saw the line at the car wash was pretty long today. And, and oak is only technically moderate in our pollen count today, but I mean, just you just go out there, you can see the oak pollen yep. on the cars. You can see those little catkins there that hang from the oak trees. They are pollinating. Now, some folks uh, got a brief shower around San Antonio. Let's go ahead and show the radar and satellite. A good mixture of sun and clouds right now. Let's zoom into Bear County, right from about Alamo Heights all the way up to uh, Windcrest and Live Oak. We were able to see a very brief passing shower, but that was it. It's pretty isolated. Now we've got a few uh, isolated showers north of Cuero and just to the west of Yoakum. Outside, the dew points are really comfortable. Dew points in the 30s. That's pretty dry on our dew point scale, but look down toward Cor Corpus Christi. We're starting to see dew points back up into the 50s, and over the next several hours, we're going to see dew points get back into the 60s through tomorrow. Whenever a dew point gets above 60 degrees, that's when you can really feel the mugginess in the air and tomorrow morning you're actually going to see the mugginess in the air in the form of uh, patchy drizzle even some patchy fog is possible all of us waking up to cloud cover 61 degrees to start the day in San Antonio tomorrow and then into the afternoon we will have peaks of sunshine more sun out to the west and out to the south but here in San Antonio will stay mostly cloudy with a high near 82 now those areas that see a little bit more sun out to the west Del Rio 91 for the high tomorrow. Catula 91, 93 in Laredo, and it'll be closer to 90 degrees in Carrizo Springs as well. Elsewhere, like I said, low to mid 80s is a fair bet. Now on the satellite and radar, it is fairly quiet across the United States. There are some areas of snow up in uh, the northern Rockies. This is around a low pressure system that's actually going to bring us a cold front, and this cold front will make it feel pretty cool outside by about Wednesday. You can see that temperatures behind this front are, are quite a bit cooler. Uh, we've got 30 degrees in Casper, Wyoming, for example. So taking you through the future cast, uh, once again, tomorrow we're going to be fairly gray with some patchy drizzle. This front, unfortunately, is not going to bring us a good chance for storms. Instead, what we'll see is a 20% chance for isolated showers on Wednesday. But behind the front, it is going to be very windy, a lot like yesterday. Wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour from the north on Wednesday with more Mornings in the 40s and afternoons in the 60s for the rest of the day. So yes, it will be cooler behind that cold front. So tomorrow morning, waking up patchy drizzle muggy. We'll see clouds stick around through noon. You'll notice the humidity, some sun in the afternoon, 82 for the high with gusts up to 20 miles per hour in a mild evening. Then that front arrives on Wednesday and that's when we'll see temperatures cool down quite a bit. For a good Friday and Easter weekend, temperatures are going to be really pleasant. Not a significant chance for rain, so it looks like 
we'll be good with the Easter egg hunts outside on Sunday. Maybe just a little dew on the Easter eggs. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. The Spurs weren't very active before the trade deadline, but they did make a big addition this weekend. They, they sure did. And it happened. They signed him on Sunday night. He's a brand new center for the San Antonio Spurs. Actually introduced today at today's shoot around. Will he play tonight? And also we come back. The world's number one ranked golfer is headed to San Antonio. Coming up. The San Antonio Spurs continue their historic nine-game homestand tonight, but they also Sacramento Kings for the first of two games against the same team. And they'll do it without Lonnie Walker, the fourth again, and still out with that sore right wrist. Lonnie will miss his fourth straight game tonight. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich saying it could be another week before he's back. The good news is the Spurs are coming off their first win on the homestand after beating the Bulls on Saturday night, 120 to 104. They saw all five starters in double figures, led by Jakob Perto with 20 points. And while the Kings are on the outside of the playoff picture right now, they have won six of their last seven games. Now the Spurs have signed former Memphis Grizzlies center Gorgie Zhang. They're waving Marquis Chris over the weekend to make room. The Spurs had just traded for Chris last Thursday, but since he was recovering from a broken leg and was not expected to play at all this season, the 6'10", 250-pound, nine-year NBA veteran played the first half of the season with the Grizzlies before he was waived on March the 26th. In 22 games this season, he has averaged nearly eight points, four and a half rebounds while shooting almost 52% from the field. The Spurs need another big man after LaMarcus Aldridge signed with the Brooklyn Nets for the rest of the season. Didn't waste any time in Introducing Gorgie at today's shoot around. So like it was like a college recruiting again, all over again. Everybody gonna talk to you and tell you like why they want you to be in their team. And I think I feel comfortable uh, what I hear here. And you know, if that's why I'm here. I like the team, I like the way they play, and uh, so that's why I'm here. Good to have you here. And the tip-off time tonight is at 7:30. Highlights for you tonight on the night beat. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Three new lawsuits have been filed against Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson, with one of them accusing him of deleting, deleting Instagram messages while contacting women and trying to settle. That brings to 19 the total number of lawsuits filed by massage therapists that accuse the NFL player of sexual assault and inappropriate conduct. Watson has denied any wrongdoing. And the Valero Texas Open has confirmed that what was reported last night on Instant Replay, that the number one golfer in the world, Dustin Johnson, will return to San Antonio for the first time since 2015. who joined the star-studded field that will include Phil Mickelson and now Ricky Fowler before he heads to Augusta to defend his 2020 title the same year he won four tournaments and came in second twice before being voted Player of the Year. So this is a great field that awaits the tee times on Thursday. That's a huge announcement yeah, right there. Big get. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. You'll definitely notice the mugginess tomorrow starting off the day with patchy drizzle. Even some patchy fog is possible. Those clouds will stick around even after lunch with some sun in the afternoon. A warm 82 degrees outside tomorrow, but then a cold front is going to arrive on Wednesday morning, bringing small chance for rain, very windy conditions with gusts up to 40 miles per hour and dropping temperatures in time for Easter weekend. We'll be waking up for most of the week in the 40s with afternoons right near 70 degrees. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you for watching the News at 5. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.